In the realm of understanding Neanderthal life, three significant archaeological sites in Germany, Neumark Nord, Gröben, and Taubach, have provided groundbreaking insights. These sites have been crucial in unveiling the relationship between Neanderthals and straight-tusked elephants during the last interglacial period. Neumark Nord, located near Halle in central Germany, is especially notable. Discovered by coal miners in the 1980s, it stands as one of the richest sites for studying Neanderthal activities from approximately 130,000 to 115,000 years ago. The Groben and Taubach sites complement these findings, offering additional context and confirmation of the behaviors observed at Newmark Nord. Together, these locations form a triad of archaeological significance, painting a more comprehensive picture of Neanderthal subsistence and social behavior during a critical period of prehistory. The discovery process at these sites, particularly at Newmark Nord, was both extensive and revealing. Initially uncovered by coal miners, the Newmark Nord site later became the focus of detailed archaeological excavation. Here, researchers unearthed the skeletal remains of around 70 straight-tusked elephants, a species that stood nearly 4 meters tall at the shoulder and weighed up to 13 metric tons. These remains, dating back 125,000 years, were crucial in establishing the interaction between Neanderthals and these large mammals. Alongside these bones, flint tools were found, displaying clear marks indicative of butchering activities. These tools, classical in their design, bore evidence of cutting and scraping, suggesting a systematic approach to processing the elephant carcasses. The discovery of these elements was pivotal, not just in illustrating the scale of elephant hunting by Neanderthals, but also in providing insights into their tool-making and usage skills. These findings have reshaped our understanding of Neanderthal hunting practices, social structures, and their capacity for preserving and storing large quantities of meat, thereby challenging previous assumptions about their lifestyle and capabilities. The discovery of how Neanderthals managed and stored the large amounts of meat obtained from hunting straight-tusked elephants is fascinating. Given the sheer size of these animals, each hunt would yield a substantial quantity of meat, challenging the Neanderthals to develop effective preservation methods. Evidence suggests they likely employed drying or smoking techniques over charcoal fires. The presence of charcoal fires around the archaeological sites indicates that Neanderthals might have hung the meat on racks and built fires underneath to dry or smoke it. This method of smoking meat, a form of slow cooking and preservation, would have helped in prolonging the meat's edibility by reducing moisture and impeding the growth of bacteria. Drying meat, on the other hand, would involve exposing sliced meat to sun and air further reducing moisture content and preserving it for future consumption. These methods not only exhibit an advanced understanding of food preservation, but also imply a level of planning and resource management previously not attributed to Neanderthals. The implications of these findings on our understanding of Neanderthal social structures are profound. The ability to hunt large prey like straight-tusked elephants and the subsequent need to process and store large amounts of meat suggests that Neanderthals possibly lived in larger and more complex social units than previously believed. The cooperative effort required in hunting such massive animals, followed by the collective task of butchering and preserving the meat, indicates a level of social organization and cooperation that is sophisticated and structured. Moreover, the volume of meat from a single elephant capable of feeding a large group for an extended period supports the idea that Neanderthal groups might have been larger and more settled than the small nomadic bands we often imagine. This challenges the conventional narrative of Neanderthals living in smaller groups of around 20 and points towards a social dynamic that was capable of supporting larger communities 
potentially facilitating more complex social interactions and cooperative behaviors. Such a revelation not only reshapes our understanding of Neanderthal society, but also their cognitive abilities and cultural complexity, adding depth to the narrative of human history. In the vicinity of Neumark Nord, Gröben and Taubach, where extensive elephant remains were found, archaeologists also unearthed an array of tools, predominantly made of flint. These tools were not just rudimentary in design, but showcased a level of sophistication in their crafting. The majority of these tools were likely used for butchering, as evidenced by the types of tools found and the cut marks on the elephant bones. The tools included various types of flint knives and scrapers, each possibly serving a specific purpose in the butchering process, such as skinning, dismembering, or defleshing the large carcasses. The presence and use of these tools at the sites reveal much about Neanderthal cognitive abilities and lifestyle. Firstly, the precision and consistency of the cut marks on the elephant bones suggest that Neanderthals possessed a detailed understanding of the anatomy of these large animals. They knew where to cut to efficiently separate meat, fat, and other usable materials from the bones. Secondly, the tool's existence and use indicate a level of planning and skill in tool making that goes beyond mere survivalist instincts. Crafting these tools would have required knowledge of materials, such as selecting the right kind of flint and shaping it effectively. This tool-making ability reflects cognitive skills like foresight, problem-solving, and perhaps even teaching and learning within the group. The findings at these sites, including the tools, significantly contribute to our broader understanding of Neanderthals. They were not just brutes as earlier thought, but skilled hunters and butchers with a complex understanding of their environment and resources. The tool's sophistication underscores the Neanderthal's ability to adapt and innovate, which is crucial for survival in varying conditions. These findings challenge the long-held view of Neanderthals as primitive and intellectually inferior to Homo sapiens, suggesting instead that they exhibited a level of cultural and technological development that was quite advanced for their time, hunting straight-tusked elephants, which were twice as large as mammoths, would have posed significant challenges for Neanderthals. These elephants stood nearly four meters tall at the shoulder and weighed up to 13 metric tons. To successfully hunt such massive creatures, Neanderthals would have needed to employ strategic and cooperative hunting methods. It is likely that they used techniques such as ambush hunting, where they would have exploited the natural landscape to trap or corner these large animals. This could involve driving the elephants into difficult terrain, such as mud pits or steep ravines, where their mobility would be limited, making them more vulnerable to attack. The use of weapons and tools would have been crucial in these hunts. While the exact weaponry used by Neanderthals is still a subject of research, it is likely that they employed spears and other sharp tools made of flint for killing and butchering these animals. The effectiveness of these weapons would have depended not only on their construction, but also on the skill and bravery of the hunters, who would have had to get dangerously close to these giant animals to deliver a fatal blow. The successful hunting of straight-tusked elephants would have required considerable planning and coordination among Neanderthals. It suggests that they worked in groups, possibly involving tactical planning, to corner and bring down these large animals. This level of cooperation implies a sophisticated social structure with the ability to communicate plans, divide tasks, and work collectively, a significant indicator of their social and cognitive abilities. The risks involved in hunting such large animals were immense, considering the size and potential aggressiveness of straight-tusked elephants. However, the rewards of a successful hunt 
would have been substantial, providing enough meat to feed a large group for an extended period. This abundance of food resources could have had profound effects on Neanderthal society, allowing for larger group sizes and potentially less nomadic lifestyles. In conclusion, the hunting of straight tusked elephants by Neanderthals demonstrates a high level of hunting skill, social organization, and strategic planning. It underscores the Neanderthals' adaptability and ingenuity in exploiting the resources of their environment, revealing a complex and capable species far removed from the primitive caricatures often depicted in popular culture. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.